Collaborative information seeking, or CIS, can be defined as an information seeking process that takes place in a collaborative project, uh, which is possibly a complex task among a small group of participants, potentially with a different set of skills or roles, uh, which is intentional, interactive, and mutually beneficial. The notion that information seeking is not always a solitary activity and that people working in collaboration for information intensive tasks should be studied and supported has become more prevalent in the recent years than ever before. Researchers from various fields, including computer supported cooperative work, human computer interaction, information retrieval, and social media networking are coming together to address new challenges rising from CIS related issues. Some of these works are system oriented, in which they are designing and developing services, algorithms, and tools to enhance information search and usage in collaboration. And then there are others that are user oriented, in which the focus is on supporting user driven collaborative activities with the help of specialized interfaces. This is not the first time scholars have acknowledged the social aspect of information seeking, but it is the first time such interest coincides with a combination of new technologies such as Web 2.0 and social media or networking tools and changes in human behavior, including people's increasing in a tendency to quickly and ubiquitously share and connect with others uh, through new interfaces and devices. I believe by studying and developing systems to support CIS, we can hope to help uh, end users discover, create, and make sense of information in ways that have not been possible with existing individualized systems and tools. It's an exciting area of research and development, and we are just getting started. Hi, my name is Rob Capra, and I'm an assistant professor in the School of Information and Library Science at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I want to give you a brief sense of what other fields are important to research and development on collaborative information seeking. Collaborative information seeking is concerned with how groups of people work together to search for information. So if you think about it, there are three main parts to collaborative information seeking. First, there's the collaborative aspect, which draws heavily from the field of computer-supported cooperative work and the study of how people work together in teams. Second is the information component. The field of information retrieval has rich tools and algorithms that can be adapted in novel ways to support collaborative search. For example, imagine that a search engine was aware that you and a colleague had split up a complex search task and then showed you each results that were only relevant to your part of the search. Third is the seeking part. Here, we can look at the long history of research in information and library science that investigates how people look for information and how they get assistance from others. In the collaborative context, teammates may influence how each other search, which makes things even more interesting. And finally, even though it's not part of the phrase collaborative information seeking, the area is heavily connected to the field of human-computer interaction. Collaborative search systems often require innovative interfaces that go beyond just the standard set of 10 blue links. And this is where a solid understanding of the principles of human-computer interaction are important. So you can see that collaborative information seeking is an area that draws on research from many different fields. So how does collaborative information seeking fit into collaborative information behavior? Um, collaborative information behaviors consist, consist of three, what I would call broad phases. The first phase is the identification of the information problem. What is it that people want to, what problems are people trying to deal with? The second phase is the collaborative information seeking phase, which is once you've identified the problem, going and finding the information retrieve, and retrieving the information. And then that feeds into the third phase, which is the use of the information. So these three phases are interconnected, and collaborative information seeking plays a very important role in collaborative information behavior. Without the ability to find uh, the needed information, they couldn't solve the problem. So I would uh, define that define collaborative information seeking as uh, a key component of the collaborative information behavior uh, model. And so, how does collaborative information behavior model? How could that lead to supporting the development of CIS tools. Um, and I would argue that basically what collaborative information behavior allows researchers 
uh, as well as practitioners do, is to understand the context of how CIS is used. Um, the design of these CIS tools are dependent on kind of understanding not only the functionalities of supporting collaboration within the system, such as chat or information sharing, but also it involves understanding how these systems will be used uh, under what context. And what collaborative information behavior really speaks to is understanding these broader contexts. Um, and, and, and I think from that perspective, that's what uh, CIB brings to uh, CIS system development. Thank you. My research has identified several common scenarios that often prompt collaborative information seeking. For example, travel planning is a big one that affects family groups, groups of friends, or even groups of business colleagues who all want to look online to find information about different travel options, such as what hotel the group should stay in or what activities they should use to fill out their agenda, and they want to coordinate and share what they've found easily with others while avoiding redundant work. Purchasing big-ticket items such as cars, real estate, or even fancy electronics is also something that often includes multiple stakeholders who have a financial say in the outcome, such as a husband and wife pair, who both want to research online options and then compare and contrast what they've found before making a final purchase decision. Healthcare can pro prompt collaborative information seeking, particularly when other family members who are concerned about their loved one's diagnosis want to go online to research new relevant material, such as new available medications or what treatment providers are particularly expert on that diagnosis, and then they want to share that information back to the original person affected by the illness. Finally, increasingly, we've seen new, more casual sorts of collaborative information seeking that we call friend sourcing, wherein people will casually use online social networks, such as Facebook or Twitter, to seek their network's assistance with information seeking tasks. This is particularly common for product recommendations, such as which brand of baby car seat should I purchase for my three-year-old? This is a way of offloading some of the work of search by using social search as a backup option. Recent studies have shown that collaboration has the potential to produce synergic effects in online information search. For instance, through collaboration, individual group members might be able to cover or at least be exposed to larger regions of the information available on a given topic. In turn, this exposure to information might increase the likelihood of the group to find relevant information for the problem being solved. Now, this is possible because when working in collaboration, group members can share information, queries, critics, and so on and so forth. Moreover, in collaboration, uh, group members might decide to adopt different strategies to tackle the problem. In some cases, they might prefer to divide up the work, or in other cases, they might prefer to work on the same part in order to double check each other's findings. Now, in spite of the potential benefits of collaboration to produce these synergic effects, it is necessary to take in consideration the additional factors to make this collaboration effective. For example, the systems that are used, or human factors such as personality, emotions, mood, etc. Uh, or the setting in which collaboration takes place, like synchrony or location. I want to talk about mundane collaborative information seeking. So what I mean by that is maybe you're searching for something at your desk uh, and you get a bit stuck and you go over to a colleague's cubicle and ask them for help um, and they have a few ideas and search on their laptop and you chip in some ideas and together the two of you figure out the problem. Or maybe I'm at lunch with a friend uh, and my friend mentions something that they're a bit stuck on uh, and I suddenly have a bright idea and get out my smartphone and search away and then show them and say, oh, is that what you mean? Uh, maybe I'm right. Or maybe it just inspires them and then they get out their smartphone and start looking. And the two of us together, over lunch, figure out the problem. So that clearly is collaborative information seeking, um, but it seems to be in a different category. Um, it's often quick, um, typically efficient, rather ephemeral kind of thing that people don't even notice they're doing. Uh, and if you ask them about it, they may not actually remember that what they are doing is at all collaborative. So that really intrigues me. 
Um, and I think it's worth studying uh, to get some insights in what we might do to support it more effectively. One thing I've found um, is that people appropriate all different kinds of tools and applications in order to enable them to do this kind of collaborative work. Sometimes these are tools that are designed to support collaboration, but not really collaborative information seeking. And sometimes they're tools that were clearly designed for individual use uh, and not even designed for any kind of information seeking at all. But people are creative and can assemble their own collaborative information seeking infrastructure. So I think this is fascinating. Uh, and I think if we study what it is that people do already, it can give us some insights into building better tools that align with what people do when they do this sort of spontaneous collaboration.